Blessings and welcome for to Reasons Right and Share Life. I am your host, the Great Owl, in the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh. Perfect <laughs> love, perfect, perfect love. love. As it's raining, and it's been raining for, I guess, two weeks, and within the last couple of days, we had a passage of, well, I guess it became a hurricane, but it was a, a tropical um, storm, Ian, right? And I think Ian currently now is probably going across the Florida Panhandle and probably going out into you know the open seas are it's probably still on land I'm not 100 percent sure as of this video um but i know that we are currently going through a lot of rainy conditions wet conditions right and so i just want to encourage you to remain dry and if you are in a flood prone area in any of the affected areas i wish you get to dry land higher ground and if your family have lost you know property and you know, and, and equipment and, you know, and even maybe one or two lots of lives, you know, our condolences goes out to you. Just know that this is not the end of life. You live and survive for a reason. Life continues. Yeah, may we gather together, harmonize it, work together, right, and support each other in the process of rebuilding our emotional well-being as well as our physicalities and our environment. So our current offering at this moment circles around the sad reality of modern relationships, right? And, um... I mean, I can't even think about that without even, you know, saying, you know, I think the way we, we were growing up in terms of how it was inferred or we should be has so changed in the last 30 years to something like literally the polar opposite yeah, of diametrically opposed in viewpoints have now been established as the way to go. I think it's probably codified in some kind of a psychological language, maybe a religious language as a traditional family versus a modern family, right? So. I think a modern family is, um, is gender neutral, right? And I think it's not gender specific, nondescript. It's based on a pronoun and a kind of a weird understanding of gender, gender issues and human, biological and psychological relationship. It's causing legal issues all across the planet. It's causing issues of masculinization for female or emasculation or effeminization for male there is this sense of a kind of a softer male presence, a more aggressive female presence. Uh, it's seemingly coming like she is um, more the breadwinner, uh, you know, because single parent families have been headed by women for 40 years. And so children born out of that, how do they view reality when they haven't seen two parents in the home? And so the two parent household, the traditional family, man is the head, God is the head of man if you're religious, but man is the head and a woman in essence complements the man, right? Her behaviors and her attitudes not being seen as less but feminine means a nurturing, softer approach, not necessarily the aggressive male hunting mentality to go and earn. So there are things that are codified in genetics that became functionality in centuries, millennia past that is now being reinterpreted. Right? And so in the religious sense, there is the Proverbs 31 woman that would be an inference or representation of what the true wife of the traditional you know, ilk or mindset would be. But I guess she pales in comparison to a woman in the modern that's getting the bag, driving um, high-end cars, and stating an economic difference between herself in viability with her male counterparts has made her equal, happier, progressive, and fulfilled. And so the idea of what a man ought to be, what a relationship ought to be, has changed. Brother Singh, what are your take on these things? Am I going way too far, even though it was your topic? Or do I have a point somewhere along there about how things have changed? Yes, brother Beto. When I recall my grandparents, when I was young and seeing my grandparents striving, you know, thriving. Mm -hmm. Grandpa and grandma, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> they've lived together. Grandpa is a farmer and a pastor. You know, and community, what I call it, like a JP. Mm -hmm. 
you know, him give people advice on how to do paperwork and get government stuff done. Yes. You know? So him help build the community as well, you know? Awesome, man. So, and my grandma now, she would get up in the kitchen, mm -hmm. clean up the house, washing clothes, you know, feeding certain animals, what she feed, like chicken, you know? And I say, yeah. So me see this growing up and see it as a proper structure and how life should be. You know? <laughs> but my mother and father them divorced while I was about well in grade one. Wow. You know? Yes, yes. Them divorced. So me never get to grow up with a father figure and father and mother living together as a proper household. Mother start growing me and my brother. Yes. You know, so we miss that part where the father helped grow me. And we learn certain things from our father. You know? So the mother have to take up father role too. <laughs> uh, attempt, yeah, yeah. Yeah, attempt, yeah. yeah. So even that kind of masculinized the woman them. Mm -hmm. So they have to take up roles one of them. Absolutely understood. And I see him with the man now, I take up roles one of them too. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You know, because some, some woman I ask man to do female things. You see me? And which man not comfortable with that? Yeah. You know? Being a house husband. Yes, I. So, with that say, after finding Christ, I did talk to Father and said, Father, they're like a nice godly woman, you know. A woman, a woman of God, you know. I love, love God. Mm -hmm. And I do the right thing. Absolutely. There are many women out there. <laughs> many, many, many. But as the Bible says, a virtuous woman is hard to find. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that you the know? truth? But I God asked me a question now and said, Are you suitable for a woman of God? Yes. <laughs> this is a fair and righteous question. Yeah. So God put it on my heart to fix up yourself. Yes. So you become a suitable husband. Yes. For a proper woman of God, a virtuous woman. Because a virtuous woman. She no want an ungodly man. Yes. Hallelujah. The virtuous woman wants a righteous man. So God say, oh, you have to be that righteous man that the woman never be happy with. Absolutely. You see me? And that you want, you know? Yes. Want a virtuous woman. Yes. So you have to be a virtuous man. Yes. A virtuous woman deserves a virtuous man. Yes, I. So at that Father put in on me now as a mission to say, all right, we need to be more holy, more righteous. Yes. You know, be become that virtuous man where the woman I'm going to be pleased with. Yes. You know, and after a couple of years of working for myself, I saw Father just bless me with my wife what I have right now. Yes, sir. You know, bless me with two children with her. Yes, sir. So we married about, well, about three years now, three and a half years now. That's a blessing, brother. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, so... Relationship nowadays... Because when we get the ring, you know... When we get the wedding ring, both of us went to buy it. Yes. And the person asked me if we want to write anything in it. So, we said, all right, we're going to put a name. Me and our name, you know. Yes, yes. But Christ, Jesus Christ. Yes. Christ's name. Yes. I got there in between with. Yes, yes. So him there in the middle. Yes. Which is the groom. Yes. The whole us together. That's how I see. How you see me? Yes. So without him, there's no us. Yes. So a Christ. From this how we say our Christ. Yes. Our whole we together. No matter what. Yes. Through the thick and the thin, to the happy and the sad, 
rice. Yes. yes. I go hold it together no matter what. You know, because cause when we engage to her now, some things happen. Yes, yes. And what they are trying to break we up. Yes. So I break the back. And we have to draw back on the ring and say, we have to tell her to look on the ring. Yes. What day not the middle lesson? Yes. She said, Christ. And we say, remember, he him have a whole way together. Yes. And a wheel with self. Yes. A him. Absolutely. I go hold the thing together. And from this up, Father does some I just progress. You know, smooth and steady. The love will grow stronger and stronger every year. Yes. The peace in the family. Yes. Love in the family. Yes. You know? We appreciate the two children. And we help grow them up strong. As soon as we see them falter. Yes. And we fix them up, man. Mm -hmm. You see me? I say, no man, stop that. Yes. And tell them to do the right thing because you can't see the badness. Yes. And go on. And just make it go on. Yes, yes. You have to it stop all, it right away. So it, it all continue. You know, so even that now father helped me become a righteous father as well. Yes, yes. Because not just a righteous husband, you know. Yes. Have to be a righteous father. Yes. To be just with your wife and the children. I mean the essence of what the religious and the spiritual family is based on as a world that's being equally yoked. Meaning that you agree. You agree to the degree that your differences still makes you bonded. You agree on the faith of the Most High. You agree on the principle of the Most High. And you agree on a collectively good outcome in the Most High. I think materially, spiritually, vibrationally, if you don't have harmony within your emotional and spiritual relationship, especially in the intimate relationship, you won't go forward with the kind of goodness you desire because you have to have a source of good vibration that goes beyond the man and the woman because when you are both failing, when you are both lacking as individuals and affecting the harmony of the collective, you need the eternal source of support, of well-being, Mm -hmm. That's in Christ, that is in Yeshua, that's in yud hey vav -Hey. I think the essence of a lasting relationship is if it's really founded on where your strength and your spirit is fed. Because that will be your sustainer in everything. So in being happy in a family situation, if you started out religious or she started out religious, it will be better if two time both will come to the sameness of experience spiritually religiously or otherwise because it would bring more harmony in the family you will expand better you will grow to know each other better because there is a greater source at which you grow towards because that is very essential you know one of the things that I respect about good relationships or good families is obviously when both individuals are clearly individuals but yet bonded as a unit and when that bond is evident in their children it's more wholesome there will always be the potential for there to be trouble within any paradise but to have a means by which you can address it adjust it overcome the indifference maybe the essence of access to therapy but therapy of a spirited righteous nature meaning people truly understand the depth of human bonds in intimacy and in marriage so the true marriage to me is not just about if a man puts a ring on a woman's finger and it's acknowledged in front of a priest why that is a representation the true marriage is a bond of heart is the commitment, hallelujah, of the spirit. And that commitment, if it's done the right way, cannot be broken by external issues because external issues, just like everything else that is cyclical and seasonal, have a time and a place for all of their occurrence. But that which is born in spirit is born in truth. 
And that's why it's equally yoked. So that's why in faith, you would have a genuine foundation of which your family is built upon that. Maybe even a marriage or in a relationship, there might be moments where there is separation, but there's still a return because a greater bond, the glue that you call it, holds beyond the moments of separation. So, the sad reality of a modern relationship is that a lot of the bonds have come out of the principles of religiousness, religiosity, sense of well-being and purpose to uh, hedonistic, materialistic, self-satisfying, grandizing fantasy like the e-harmony match coordination sequences which is a match in nepotism, right? It's narcissistic and nepotistic because all it's about is all the things that I like, she likes all those things too. And so, if I'm a glutton, she's a glutton. If I am greedy, she's greedy. Hallelujah. If I'm a skank, she's a skank. If I'm a cheat, she's a cheat. Yeah, she's my ride or die loser, just like I am. I have no principle, no morals, no belief, no foundation. And she's likewise, no principle, no morals, no belief, no foundations. And we're perfectly bonded in this new transverse identity of modern relationships. It's all, it's all good. And it, it's flaky. It falls apart easily, continuously, because in order to grow and expand in worth and virtue, you need spiritual foundation. You need actuality in spiritual grounding, in righteous grounding. Mm -hmm. And this is being taught by the church, <laughs> the religious teachers, our great grandparents. We've been taught by right principle, traditional principles that are now frowned upon. But those of us who have this principle, I don't think we can fully express ourselves by expecting a woman or a man that don't have those principles to understand them, appreciate them, and be happy to experience them with us. No, no, no. That's how we have conflicts, because we're not being honest, right? We're not equally yoked. That's, that's a, that's, because we're not based on principles. We're never based on principles in this equation. It's based on gratitude, I mean, <laughs> gratification, <laughs> not gratitude. Bay, I'm not letting you trick me. It's not based on gratitude, it's gratification. Because that's how they know reality. The woman who's staying with the man who don't have the iron job. He's just a farmer. But she's with him. And that's how the kids are grown. And she's a dressmaker. Because that's what we grew up with. I grew up with those expressions, right? I didn't grow up with my father and my mother, but my stepfather and my mother were together my entire life. After my father did what he did and they left, my stepfather came like a year later and he was there until he died, as you know, in 2018, right? That's my entire life virtually. So I, I saw a stability. And my mother, she worked in the forestry department for a great portion of her life and amongst the political people as a political activist. And my stepfather, he worked as an end butler at King's House. And as I said, growing up in King's House, I got to experience the life inside of the house of the monarch, practically the monarch representative in Jamaica. Right? So I got to see both sides and I got to see working together. I got to see moments when it was high, moments when it was low. I got to know the dignified moments like meeting the so-called dignitaries. I knew how to present myself as a child. I knew how to make speeches because I, had, I was immersed in an environment. So just being immersed in seeing people having to work together, yeah, because sometimes they had to be out farming too, right? Sometimes we had to go to the river catching river shrimp, right? And to the sea with him catching fish, right? So there was experiences within the family setting that lets you understand that males and females work together for the cohesion of a life that is in harmony. So mom have her opinions about reality. My stepfather had his opinions about reality. Mom is quite an intellect, so her, her ideas is strong. He's also an intellect, yeah, but in all the systematic structure, but yet with an ancient, um, I would say, cynical view of, of reality or one of those views 
from, from that time, but the view of the cynics, right? And I was like, whoa, in between all of this. So the next part of what helps us to become who we are is the structure that happens within the family. Because if you don't have people that are well suited to each other, the development of the emotions and the mentality and the abilities of the children are going to be impaired. So people might say, well, I got my own problems, but the problems start because of choices, because of beliefs, because if you don't understand the kind of mentality that you might not see as an alpha mentality that's in your face, is a nurturing mentality that will preserve and protect a family mentality must be understood and recognized, revered and respected for it to be of value because you would have been with the good man, the good wife, the good woman, yeah, the good husband and not recognize, take it for granted and destroy your family and destroy the children because they grew up and it's not just because you're divorced it's because literally you both are bitter and angry and terribly upset with each other that the subtleties of those behaviors transfer to your children and they didn't develop proper loving mitigatable behaviors they develop neurotic psychotic behaviors but are repressive or progressively neurotic sorry to use the psychological terms hallelujah <laughs> your kids are out of, out, of, out of sorts troubled children because you are troubled your relationship is troubled hallelujah you didn't choose principally and you, and you blamed um, just the moments, and you blamed ecstasy, you blamed fantasy. But these pronouns, these prologues, these procuratures that we present before ourselves, right? These statements that define us. We must be careful that they're not taking us out of reality and putting us into a design. <laughs> That's the same. Yeah, brother, do it all. That's why I mention communication important. Good communication and good expression of when you get hurt by the other, you express it calmly. In, you, know, you, just, you can say, you know, when you say that or when you do that, it makes me feel this way. Yes. You know, you know, I pressure them all say, yo, me not like you, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, so I say, when you say something like that to me, or when you do something like that, it makes me feel this way. Yes. You know, so express yourself. To make them aware that when you do that, it hurt them. Sometimes we buckle it up mm. and don't say anything. Mm. And I say in your mind, you know, why am I treat me so, and, you know, a whole heap of bad thoughts. And then I talk to your friend. You know, Sam, do this, do that, do that, where, 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 where. Talk to the mother, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, this the mother-in-law, <laughs> you know. Hey, I'm not him good, you know. <laughs> I'll know she not talk to you. Yes. So with that advice, talk to each other first about any problems. Before you bring it across to other people, you know? Because you might, you might not even aware that she have a problem because she never say anything, but she tell everybody else. Mm -hmm. And also other people now, it influence them. Yeah. So a single friend now, I go say, you know, you feel leave him. Yeah. You know, I'm a good boy that. Or the friend when you know? in a troubled relationship also. Yeah, yeah. She care who hold a good relationship. Yeah. So she are going to want to give advice. Better you go to somebody who married for years upon years, ask for them advice about the situation. Yes. And what I'm going to tell you is talk to him. Mm -hmm. Reason it out together. Yes. I'll you know, go to a pastor. And the pastor will oversee yes. you know, this, this problem and find a solution. Yes. You know, so communication yes. important of thoughts, ideas, dreams, how you, the things you see the other person. You make them know, say, in a year mind, this is how me would I like you to stay. Mm -hmm. it, you know, because you might have it and say, why she not stay so? Mm. And you, you never yet tell her one day that, you know, I would like you to wear a long dress. 
you know? Mm -hmm. I don't like when you wear leggings on the road. Mm -hmm. Too much man, you know? Too much man eyes looking at you. How about putting on a long dress and modest, you know? Mm -hmm. Say something. Mm -hmm. Don't just say, why she love wear this in your mind? Yes. Why she love the tight up, tight up? I never yet tell her say you have a problem with it. Why not? When, you know, when you're at home, mm -hmm. you can wear it all you want. Because that's your pleasure. Yes. But while you're on the road, cover up that. Yes. We know other people see the goodies. <laughs> so right. You know, I know, brother Singh, as you said, that, you know, this is when the traditional man had his strength to shape the environment around his wife and his children. Nowadays, the, the modern hypergamous woman, right, that is so independent and self assured will say such statements are backward, misogynistic, and controlling. Because why does a man's fear of her appearance or mode of dress why should his fear affect her choice and her behavior so with a liberal culture what you're saying just went to that woman blah 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 <laughs> right literally that's what you hear right so how do we even speak to a woman like that who already has this this issue i made some points before but one of the things i want to say i recognize right when role reversal occurs because of the premise of having the power within a relationship, we call it the power dynamic within a relationship. In other videos, I already explained that Christ explained that power is illusion. But the power dynamic in a relationship, a generation is said to be patriarchal. And, and I would say it's only said to be patriarchal mainly as a, a, a point of um, interest or of concern in the Western society. Because for many Eastern and Aboriginal ancient societies, it was matriarchal and matrilineal yeah so the fact that it is now patriarchal and to some degree they are saying patrilineal but it's still matrilineal not patrilineal but this patriarchy has made women argue that for thousands of years you have controlled women's freedoms my address to that is this the ancient cultures understood gender based upon functionality now you can use legal belief systems religious arguments are the counter religious culture and counteract that argument or interfere with those ancient statements to examine them or disprove them however ancient functionalities in gender prove that the man's nature of being hunted hunting the aggressive physical nature and the phylum of the masculine the upper body strength the intensity born from will makes us gatherers hunters getters go-getters women's nature is agrarian agricultural nurturing yet more tending on to preservation maintenance of actuality so they are best in the administration of all affairs mm -hmm. a man is best in the design conquest desire of telemetry all things are laid out in stratification i should say that word move telemetry man is master of stratification but when a man has gone conquered stratified in terms of dimension laid claim for that space to function a woman has to be there if the roles were reversed, we would not advance in a manner. Show me great female monarchs that advance territory, not preserve national boundaries. I'm still talking about male and females. Don't lose. I'm not losing it. Please don't, don't leave. Show me where there are female heads of state which not just preserve national territory and boundary, but advance warfare. Show me. Show me how much of them. There might be one or two, but not a lot. Right? And if you're going to say Elizabeth Queen in her stage, I don't know how much wars that England was the lead of going out and doing the war in her time, right? And she was figurehead at that time, so she still wasn't the one directing the, the act to war. So I'm saying this to say that the act of advancing kingdoms, carrying forward philosophies, is a masculine trait. When a man has conquered, for there to be harmony and cohesion, administration is feminine. For there to be preservation of life, it's feminine. So the arts and, and, and those things that are dealing with 
compassion are feminine. Those that advance the, the functionality in terms of power to the construct, masculine. Man has to do it. Man has to outpicture the design for future. We have to structure the bones and the sinews of the reality. And women are like the very essence of the flesh, the life going through on the very skeletal of the masculine structure. We are foundations. And if we are not respected, then foundation cannot be made in the soft and the inflexible or the too soft and non-flexible, right? The masculine design and reality from the ancient word, man, head of the family, designer, woman, nurturer and preserver of the family. In her is the glue that holds the canvas, the sheet of the house of life together in the, alf, in the alif bite. So the male and the female in the traditional sense is the actual interpretation of their roles, not based upon opinions, but actuality in functionality. And this is ontological functionality. And that is why I know everything about modern relationship is based in a word called alternative lifestyles. Because you have to alter the native lifestyle and the native is a nativity because that's how you procreate. And that is the fundamental structure of our genetics. That our genome sets within females, ovaries, a vagina, males, a penis, the phallic, and the sperm, the semen. That is biological first psychological, habit forming, and behavioral. Work together, people. That's all I'm saying. Erroneous with this modern woman, independent. None of the ancient statements about man and woman was misogynistic towards women. Your mindsets are altered, and your beliefs have been altered. Brother Singh. Yes, brother, great old man, woman, in this modern time, As you said, um, the roles switch and double up because them take up two roles upon themselves. Hey. So, them, not, them have a sense of not needing the male. Mm -hmm. Modern woman here. Yeah. Yes, yes. And them even look down on the male sometimes. Hallelujah. And put males in different categories. Because when them see the successful male, like say a doctor, mm -hmm. they will more gravitate to the doctor. Yes. <laughs> but if them see a, a janitor, they now go look for him. Yes. So, in a society, woman loves security. Because security means, say, them now have to worry for the future. Mm -hmm. Now have to worry, you know? Mm -hmm. They more secure. So most time them look for money first. Them now look for no love, no Christ, no nothing. Okay. And money them I look for first and say, boy, I'm gonna see if this relationship is possible. Boy, no money, no sir. What do you bring to the table? Ah, uh, yeah man. Cause them now think say we could work together and build something. Principles. Them just say, boy, if you don't have the flashy car, I don't want you. You know? You have certain women. But you have some women now who is off guard. Mm -hmm. They look through all things. Yes. And ask God what to do. Yes. In the situation and relationship. Yes. You know? In all things that knowledge him. Yes. He shall direct thy path. Absolutely. You know, can remember you will see some woman take up some man and build them into kings. Yeah, I help the man to become a king. I wouldn't say build him. That's, yeah, that's, an, that's another. Well, um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Help him. Talk. Yes. See him journey and yes. dream. Yes. Because he said the king of a dream. Yes. And she help him reach there. Yes. You know, he and then woman there. He needs his help meet. Yes, or I. support unto his psyche. Uh, ah. Yeah. yeah, man. See him where Adam. Yes. Yes. God yes. says, Adam, we need a Eve. Yes. One said, Jano, 
the, the man alone him not go happy by himself and the animals cannot make him happy yeah. in that way and, he, and when Lilith was made Lilith ran off to her own wildness and so he said this time I shall make flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone blood of his blood, flesh of his flesh and blood of his blood so from his rib so this one now shall be like unto him so I said woman, man hallelujah yeah. yeah because he's from literally him so, yeah. so she'll be a part of him too because that's why the man is head of woman you know and not the other way in terms of the Christ is the head of man and woman yes the most I make it show sure, sure we clear say Christ is the head of man yes and head of woman is man yes yes I am teach with that yes yes you see me so the woman for know her role as well Hallelujah. and I say I know no inferior insignificant role and say she don't want no man to run her life the yeah. devil is a liar no I just for know say a righteous man and a man of God is basically is a good leader Duh. you know <laughs> so she will she now go a take over lead and a try lead the family a war is her cause uh, war exactly so a good woman humble and from the man I make proper righteous decisions for the family can we not say we not get ideas from them as well and help yes 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 but because they are, they are the administrators of the functionality you have to design a structure in which they can function and once you have designed that which is the family you chose her right to be your lawfully wedded wife or you chose her take on call her wife as the original words say mm -hmm. and so now because you have taken her into a space that you are the king you govern your space and god governs you now your authority is established and so now in that you go out you hunt you farm whatever you do and you bring home the increase thereof for her administration how she should now apply and distribute because she has to save she has to store some yeah preserve yeah because she knows the seasons yeah she has to accompany you on certain mission she has, she has to be insightful yeah and sometimes she has to take the lead in certain issues because certain issues needs the subtlety of the woman's gifts and talents because the man is not that good of a diplomat in terms of dealing with the subtleties of the intimate nature of communication amongst communal groups so the woman is always good baking those nice cakes and puddings and you know making this space appropriate for the neighbors kids to come so your kids can be socialized appropriately by the community your wife is a beautiful communicator so that even though you're not so fast on your words but you're a solid man that works hard and set a foundation she honors you with respect and the preservation of that which you have prepared for her now let's reverse it now and think about it clearly now you would miss a man think yourself very important you say you're smart you're working for years but you left and you went and you abode with this woman that you claim to have interest in you go to her home where she's paying bills right and then you tell her how she should dress how she should act you brother is out of your mind did you hear me you say i'm king i'm man and you go to a woman's house her parents house right and you want to tell her she must be submissive and you want to show her what she should be brother you are not her husband you have not established a foundation of your own of which you are the king and grounded for she to come and be the queen to administer the affairs of your lives you haven't done that hallelujah you can't claim power and you cannot claim authority and you cannot claim the dignity of husbandship over her it's impossible and it's improper to so to do that's war and that's violence you have no respect and no dignity for yourself and then you're gonna tell her how to be then you're gonna tell her how to be and then you impregnate her and then you're claiming leadership over her home you did not build and you did not contribute to hallelujah weak 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 improper so this is not no gender bias argument don't even think for a second 
these problems in modern relationship. The sad reality of modern relationship. This brother don't want a foundation of his own. He wants sugar mamas. He wants other people's baby mamas. He wants other men's wives to be king over. Out of your mind. Out of your mind. Out of your mind. No dignity and no respect. That's why some women are acting the way they're acting. Because you're lost, brother. You're not a man. You're waiting to destroy another man's relationship. You want to get his wife pregnant so she can give her husband a jacket so he can raise your kid and your male ego goes through the roof. I just tried to knock, knock the mic. <laughs> and me, do that. It's not my boy that. You must mind that. The absurdities, the madness, the lunacy. Yeah. Reap what you sow. So if you want to reap good quality beneficial outcomes in what we term the traditional relationship or the traditional way of life, in the religious way of life, because they, they have codified them as the same, the man is the head of the family and the woman is his helpmate. Equal in all ways, all regard. Roles don't make you equal or unequal. Roles are on functionality. No, don't be with a man that is disrespectful woman. Have some self-respect, hallelujah, and dignity. And brother, king, don't think something I'm going to left fire upon you and I'll show you good. Please don't be with a woman that is disrespectful, brother, that is not caring and is not genuine. So, towards harmonious good relationship, brother Singh tell you, put Christ in the middle. Yeah, enshrine his spirit in your lives, behaviors, and outcomes, and you will be fulfilled in a good, loving relationship. So until next time, this has been the great house. Reasons right here at the Trail Life. Yeah, just reminding you to like, share, subscribe, yeah, Sila Media and Trail Life Television, your yeah, Liberty Um Jamaica Farm. And so that's good food and tours Jamaica, other channels, yeah. And support the Wizio.com meaning healing therapy session. Remember to support the uh, Patreon, just keeping the ministry business going and just the flow of these good videos. So again, in the presence of my co-host brother Raman Singh, I'm the great old. Until next time, love life and blessing in your lovely relations in Christ. Perfect, perfect, perfect love. love. Perfect, perfect love. love. Yeah, all the lovers. <laughs>